everyone and welcome back to Lucky Loaders 15 where I'll be giving you five tips for tomorrow's horse race in action. Now before we get stuck into them I just want to apologise for not doing a video on today's racing. I'm sure like the rest of you, you were watching the England and Germany game last night and in the end I was just celebrating with uh, friends and family. So yeah I just unfortunately didn't get time to record a video but that's the reason why I didn't make one for today's racing. Also as well, I should say uh, June wasn't a great month for us in the end. We started okay, we had a few winners, but then when we got to Royal Ascot, it was a really disappointing festival from our point of view. The first four days were absolutely shocking. We saved a little bit on the last day, got a little bit back, but then the last part of the month, we were a little bit up and down again, had a couple of winners, had a few losers as well. So yeah, on the whole, we just uh, came out with a loss for June, but Fingers crossed we can uh, turn our fortunes around and be back amongst the winners in July and got some decent racing to look forward to as well. We've got obviously the Eclipse Stakes on Saturday, we'll have New Markets July meeting as well. So some uh, good flat action to get our teeth stuck into and hopefully we can get off to a good start tomorrow. So let's get into it then, five tips and we're going to be going to Yarmouth for my first one with my nap which runs in the 145. I thought Cayman Moon might be able to take another step forward tomorrow for Luke Morris and William Knight. At the current time recording you can back this horse at 7-2 and I'm going to recommend a one point win bet here. Now I was really impressed by the way he won on the all-weather at Lingfield last time out. He really did it very well in the closing stages and was asserting pulling away from the rest and it was a really uh, good eye-catching performance. Now even though like I said that was a weak race the handicapper has raised him seven pounds but he's still got a mark of 54 which I think could still be well within his capabilities and I think could be probably a, a, at least a 60s performer if you actually look at what he um, could go on to do from his pedigree point of view. If you actually look at his pedigree, he's actually by See the Moon out of a mare that's produced many winners over these middle distance stamina trips, uh, produced winners up to a mile and six, I believe, in the pedigree. So always, uh, it was always going to be probably in Connections' minds that when he eventually stepped up in trip, he would be seen to more effect right off a lot of his novice runs. But over that 10 furlong trip, the first time he tried it before, like I said he really did hit the line hard and he's going to be sticking at the same trip tomorrow but I think the, the track at Yarmouth will really suit him the long straight there I think that will really play to his strengths and I think he'll like it so I think at 72 tomorrow I think he's got a really good chance in this race Luke Morris as well is a positive in my opinion you know he's going to throw the kitchen sink at it and I just think that this horse will be doing his best work late on and I think he might be good enough to beat all of these so that's why um, Kamer Moon is going to be my nap of the day we then move on with an extra tip going to Haydock for the 320. Well, I thought Northern Powerhouse was quite interesting here for Graham Lee and Brian Smart. Currently available at 8 1 at the time recording. Going to recommend a 0.5 each way selection here. Now, this horse is now down to his last winning mark of 85, which in fact actually came at this course last year. It was a bit of an odd win the way he did it last year, but in the closing stages, he really did fine for pressure and in the end was a game tough winner. And that was actually in a warmer grade. Now tomorrow he's dropping down into class 4 company where he will have to shoulder top weight but this is going to be a bit more of an easier task for him compared to some of his recent assignments and I just think at this trip he's very effective, he's always been effective over 7 furlongs, I know it will say in your race card 6 furlongs and like 200 yards but effectively it measures out at just shy of 7 furlongs so I do think this trip will be uh, seen to good effect for him. And also as well, I think the bigger field was, will help too. He, I think he didn't disgrace himself at all when he finished fourth at red card last time out. But uh, I just think the small field wouldn't have suited him at all. It was only a five-runner race, a bit of a tactically messy race. Cruyff turn in the end made all, and I just think that wouldn't have suited him. I think if they go a bit of a gallop here where there's a few in here that like to do that, I think that will really play to his strengths, and I think he'll be hitting the line hard. And I think at 8-1, to one, that's a good each way price there for me. So Northern Powerhouse it is as one of my extra selections of the day. We then stay at Haydock for the next best. We then stay at Haydock for my next best where we go to the 355. An interesting three-year-old handicap here, but I thought Chase the Dollar could be the one to go with here for Joe Fanning and Mark Johnson. Now, like I said, this is going to be my next best tomorrow. Currently available at 4-1. And I'm going to recommend a one-point win bet here. Now, I think this horse has still got quite a bit of untapped potential off his current rating of 79. He was last seen at uh, Newcastle in the all-weather, finishing in second place behind Irish legend, who I thought actually ran a very respectable race at Royal Ascot when he finished in third place behind 
uh, Fox's tails. And I thought, like I said, that was a good run. So it's nice to see that form getting a good boost. Also as well, if you actually look at the sectionals and the, and the data, on um, the performance of uh, Chase the Dollar at Newcastle, his uh, times were actually very good in the closing stages and he was actually um, catching up with the winner again. So stepping up in trip should be a major positive. Also as well, the pedigree points to that being another positive too. He, he's a full brother to Dilla Dollar that actually won over this trip. So I think he does have a lot in his favour tomorrow. I think he'll be handy. I think the small field could suit him as well, especially if it did get tactical and I could see him going quite slow actually. And him maybe being in a handy position, he might be able to get first run on a couple of these with the likes of Chalk Stream, Albert Camus as well. I just think uh, he's got a lot up his sleeve, um, this horse still. And I think he could easily be a mid-80s or high-80s horse come the end of the season. So uh, Chase the Dollar is he's going to be my next best of the day. And fingers crossed we uh, can get a winner there. We then go to the evening action at Epsom where I've got two tips for you. The first one of them is going to be an extra tip where we go to the 6.05. I thought Bonnie Rigg might take all the beating here for David Probert and Andrew Bolden. Currently available at 3-1 to one at the time recording and I'm going to recommend a one point win bet here. Now I think this horse ran in a really warm three-year-old race at Sandown last time out where it was a class three contest. There's definitely going to be a few subsequent winners I think come out there. Tolbert I thought ran an OK race at Newmarket last week but I thought the first couple in that race were really smart and I think dropping back against uh, some older horses in this company might just see him to, to good effect tomorrow. Also as well he's going to be getting that three-year-old weight allowance as well which I think is always very key at this time of year so I think that's a massive positive for him. He likes to be handy up with the pace and Epsom can normally uh, ride that way and he's got a good draw tomorrow from Stool 4 to exploit that. I, ex I expect David Probert to be quick out of the gate and uh, I think he'll get a handy position and I think he just might be able to stay there come the end of the race. I think there's quite a few exposed types in here and I think Bonnie Rigg, yes, he's been a little bit up and down during his career, but I just think the drying out ground will help him and the nature of the track. He's won at Brighton before, which is a bit of a undulating track, obviously with a down and uphill finish there. But yeah, I do think that he's got a good chance in this race tomorrow, Bonnie Rigg, and I think really he should be a lot shorter than his current price of three to one. So that's why he's going to be my tip in that race. We end, then end the day with a long shot in the 8.40, the last race on the card at Epsom. And I thought Ascot Day was worth a small stakes each way bet here at 25 to 1. Four places are currently on offer at that price with um, Paddy Power and Betfair. Now this horse is trained by Bernard Llewellyn and Jordan Williams is uh, booked for the ride tomorrow claiming a handy £7 off the horse's back. Now you have to go back uh, through this horse's form to actually find out that he's actually quite well handicapped now in some of his old form. He uh, won a couple of years ago off a mark of 68. He's now in theory running off 62 and with the £7 claim of Jordan Williams he's essentially running off a mark of 55. Now I think you have to forgive his last effort at Haydock when it was soft ground but if you actually look at this horse's profile He's actually done better on a drier surface. He doesn't seem to handle it so good. So I do think you can put a line through that there. Also as well, he's dropping into a basement company of class six, which again, should be a major positive. He's got a good draw as well in still nine. Obviously, it's always uh, noted over the Derby trip that you don't want to be drawn low. Being drawn in the middle is normally quite good. And I think if Jordan Williams can get into a good position tomorrow, I think he's got a really good chance. And this is definitely his right trip with hopefully his right gra ground conditions as well, dropping into uh, a weaker grade. So I do think Ascot Day does have a good chance to at least make the first four. And that's why I'm putting him up as my long shot of the day. A 25 to 1. So there are the um, five tips for tomorrow's race and if you're still enjoying the videos and uh, and enjoying them as well and hopefully I can give you some winners remember to uh, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe here to my YouTube channel at Lucky Loaders 15. Also as well if you want to follow me on Twitter on social media my handle is at Lucky Loader 15 and if you want to find out a little bit more about myself my website is www.chrisloaderracing.co.uk so please gamble responsibly. Hopefully we can uh, have some winners tomorrow and we'll be seeing you soon. <laughs>